Hiya, welcome back to the channel. So today, as you can see, I'm working on the Vauxhall Moor Van uh, and we're doing rear brake pads. So first I need to jack it up and get the wheel off. Yes. And now we are ready to remove the wheel. Can I kick it? Even with a spray for the pain, can I kick it? Yes. Right, so now that we've carefully and successfully removed the wheel, we can have a closer look. And what you might notice is, is that the pads on this one have actually still got a decent amount of meat on them. Uh, but we changed them anyway because, well, it's the other side that's actually worn down. Uh, but when you buy the pads, you don't buy them. You don't change them one side at once anyway. So I'm going to change both sides. I'm only going to film this side. It's the same process for both sides anyway. Um, so anyway, let's get on with the shit and set this off. I'll start by unplugging the worst end, which there's a new one built into the pads. Only fits on this side, though, by the looks of things. Um, that, I'll take that out after and put the new clip in there so it's all nice and brand new. And then I'm going to take these rubber condoms off. And inside there, there's a 7mm Allen key. And it is quite far in. But it is there and they're going to need undoing so that's one yes and then the same again for the bottom one yes and now i should be able to remove the caliper like so be careful where you put that you don't want to be leaving it so it's pulling down on the on the handbrake cable or worse the isolate line so that's off there and then these pads can also be removed nice and lovingly like i said these ones have got a bit left on it's the other side that's worn out but i changed both of them because obviously we're very professional in this channel um if you was going to go further than this and you was going to change the disc you would need to remove this carrier um, and remove that and then twat it a few times probably and then the disc would come up and just go back on clean everything up but we're just doing the pads today um, that feels like it's probably about a 17 or 18 mil anyway let's carry on with what we're doing yes yes Right, so next, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take these these shims out nice and carefully, and then just nice and lovingly clean them up until they all look a bit more like that one rather than that one. Yes. Right, so now the shims are all cleaned up. And focus on cleaning this bit because the pad is going to sit in there well the other way around that's backwards but you know what i mean it's going to sit in there with the shims and what we don't want is bits of shit in there as i've shown in another video actually we don't want um we don't want this to be gripping the pad and causing it to bind so we're just not to scrape any shit off with any means necessary really whether it be a nice quality snap-on range screwdriver or a wire brush or whichever way it works but it needs to be clean something like that so really what you're looking for is any lumps of rust on it that's that's the bit that's going to cause any problems uh, and then we can put our shims back on and now we can start contemplating fitting the nice shiny new pads now the one with the wire on it that was on the piston side of the caliper when it came off which is the inside so first we'll put this one on on the outside and it's pretty simple really now i like to put a bit of copper dick on the ears of the pads just nice and centrally not loads not smeared all over the back of it or anything just on the contact areas that's where i usually put it anyway uh, and then this should go in here like like it's not doing Yes, as we can see, that is also nice and smooth in there, so it's 
not likely to cause any issues with binding. Um, same again with this one, but obviously from the other side. Yes. Right, so now we've got our pads installed in the carrier, we need to put our caliper back on. And normally we would push the piston back, but this is an handbrake mechanism. So you can't just push the piston back. Now, luckily I've got the tools to do it. You can do it without the tools though, but to be honest, it's probably more hassle than it's worth. Um, I'm not sure if this is left hand or right hand thread now. I'm just gonna have to check it, test it. I'll test it right hand first, because most of my right hand. If you don't have a tool to do it, then the trick to try and get the piston back in is you need to apply force on it. So pushing it in, not ridiculously hard, but pushing it in whilst twisting the piston. So the G-clamp and a pair of pliers trick, yeah, it's not the neatest, but if you're stuck in the shit, you can get the piston back usually by doing that method. Anyway, I'm gonna wind the piston in with the professional tools because I am obviously a professional. All right, so I'll try and show how to do this. If we look at the piston, it's got two holes in it. And then if we look at the tool, we've got an adapter. We've got multiple adapters, but that's the one that fits. So we locate that onto so that the pegs are in the the holes and then as just nip that up so that's tight against this plate is tight against here and then now as we turn that it should it should wind in Now, as with pushing pistons back, ideally, yep, you're supposed to crack the bleed nipple out, uh, crack the bleed nipple off to drain the fluid out rather than pushing it backwards. Um, but this sort of does it nice and slowly, shouldn't really do any harm, but just be careful if you're going to do this. And if it does fuck up, just don't blame me. I mean, I'm not bothered if it fucks up, but if it does, just don't blame me. Right, so now, as we see, the piston is now, seems to be pretty much fully retracted and then when the pistons all the way in and it sort of looks like a penis on a cold day hiding um, then it should stop don't start writhing on it and fucking tugging on it or anything um, but yeah that should be all the way in and then to remove this we just back it off from that part there and that is the piston now wound all the way in, as you can see. And we're pretty much ready to put our caliper back on. Um, but, well, as you can see, it'll go back on. But first, let's give it a bit of a clean up. And these slides actually look all right but i'm going to give them a bit of a silicon grease just to be on the safe side yes and the same applies for this one Probably should have put it in the old first, but that'll do, fuck it. And now I've just moved the tripod around a bit to just show what we're doing here, but this wire needs to be fed through there. And this needs placing over there nice and carefully. Yes. And now we can uh, screw the caliper pins into a torque setting of something or other. Whilst making sure that these little rubber johnnies around here don't get folded up and come into the way. 
So let's tighten these two up. There's a bottom one. Yes. And then there's a top one. Yes. And of course, not forgetting to put these little rubber caps over the top of everything. And then this needs plugging in, but first it needs to be rooted. So there's a little clip, there's a little clip there which it goes into on the back of the caliper. And then it appears it probably goes under here. Yeah, that's I'd say that's where it goes. And then this has got a plastic clip which look here, it's there. And then this will plug into it. Yes. And that is pretty much done for this side. Uh, just while I'm here, I'm going to spray a bit of grease on these moving parts to give them the best chance of not fucking up in the future. Not forgetting to pump the brake pedal back up. And, um, Give the handbrake a couple of tugs as well, just in case. And now we can put the wheel back on and torque it up to a torque setting. And that is one side complete. Now I've got to do the other side, but I won't put you through that because if you made it this far, you've already endured enough. Um, so anyway, I'll uh, leave you with that. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all usual shit. Uh, see you next time.